I purchased the plans for this arc from toymakingplans.com, and I will leave a link to the site in the description. Since I'm operating a business and plan on making this set again, I made a template for the arc out of masonite. The blank for the arc is three quarter inch thick red oak, eight and a half inches wide and 10 inches long. I take the template, place it on the wood and trace it with a pencil. I drilled two pilot holes to make the interior cuts for the door and window. The arc has no complicated cuts, the animals are not complex, so I consider this a beginner level project. And quick tip, I've given this before, but in case you haven't seen it, if you run the blade along your thumb like this, you'll feel a little bit of resistance one direction. If you feel it run it the other way, it wants to grab. Obviously you don't do it too, too hard or you might actually cut yourself, although you really have to work at it. Uh, so I know that's the way the teeth are, most of the teeth are running and that's down. You want to do most of your cutting on the down stroke. Let's make the outside cut. I'm using a number nine Pegasus modified geometry plate. I'll leave a link in the upper right hand corner to a video where I tested 14 blades and found this series to be the best for my use. If you are new to scroll sawing and are unsure what blades to use, I recommend purchasing one or more of the blade assortments to determine your favorite. I'll leave a link to Bearwood Supply in the description, my source of Pegasus blades. And being upfront with you, I recently became an associate, so if you place an order using that link, I will receive a commission. Whenever you're cutting on the scroll saw, it's important to use the right size blade for the task and to adjust the cutting speed if you need to. My rule of thumb for three quarter inch stock is generally a number nine blade run at close to full speed. Let the blade do the work. If you push too hard to try to cut faster, the blade may flex and that will leave an uneven cut. Too much pressure can also cause the blade to overheat and possibly burn the wood or even cause the blade to break. This arc has one very long outside cut, plus interior cuts for the door and window. Even a beginner should be able to complete these shapes with no problems. After completing the outside cut, I worked on the stand. It has a notch cut in the middle of the top, which is the width of the arc it will support. The pattern is sized so the notch is too narrow, so I can make the initial cut, then sneak up on the width a tiny bit at a time until it provides a tight fit for the top. The depth of the notch will also need minor adjustments in the same manner. After I'm satisfied with the notch in the base, I perform the same operations on the bottom of the arc. You want it to fit tight enough so the arc won't wobble, but loose enough that a child can easily place the pieces together. I recommend you do it as I did here. Cut the notch in the base first, leaving it too small initially. You can always take another cut, but it's too late to add material once the opening is too wide. It's kind of one of those basic things about woodworking you should never forget, like the rule, measure twice, cut once. The inside cuts for the door and window are rectangles with rounded corners, so a newbie on the scroll saw should be able to make them easily. Rounded corners are much easier to cut than 90 degree angles with sharp points. I drilled a pilot hole for each of the inside cuts, threaded the blade through the hole, made the cut, then loosened the blade and tossed the waste piece. The process is the same for the second inside cup. I looked at the clock before I started, and again after I completed this step, and noted it only took about 10 minutes to cut the arc. Not too shy. One of the things I like to do on this arc is to round over the edges. Now sometimes I just round edges over with sandpaper on really small things, like animals for the arc. Uh, but obviously this is much bigger, and uh, I think a nice round over looks good. The only thing is uh, the bit will, I'm going to do all these edges, when it gets here, it can't get into that, uh, I don't round way into that notch. area, that corner, but that's okay. One edge, skip over the notch, then start again. I do round the inside cuts for the door and window. You could use a handheld router for this, but I prefer the router table. Just remember you need to feed the work against the direction the router plate is spinning. This means when you're using a router table, you need to feed the workpiece from right to left. This may seem counterintuitive, but it is very important. Feeding workplace incorrectly can cause it to be grabbed from your hands and sent flying at a high rate of speed. Hearing protection is a must when using a router. It is likely the noisiest machine in the shop. 
I don't round over the edges of the base for the arc. I just use sandpaper by hand to break the edges. This is a children's toy, so you don't want to leave any sharp edges anywhere. I've got um, all the animals cut out, and I like to make them out of different species of wood. The bear here looks like a polar bear to me, so I'm going to put the polar bear on uh, some three-quarter inch maple. And that's a small piece. These are small pieces. One way you can attach patterns to wood is in your little dollar store or wherever they sell school supplies. These little glue sticks couple bucks and uh, they work real nice. Plans showed some of the animals like the bear on three-quarter stock but others on half inch. I planed some maple down to half some of these. One of the most common methods of attaching patterns is to cover the wood with glue painters tape then fix the patterns to the tape with spray adhesive. It's messier than I like with a bunch of small patterns so I chose my favorite instead scroll saw tape. Scroll saw tape comes in 25 foot rolls from the Winfield Collection slash scroller online. I'll leave a link in, this, in the description. This is a double sided tape which you unroll, adhere one side to the wood, then cut the length. Next, you peel off the backing, leaving a sticky second side, and you press your patterns against this. The tape holds the patterns in place while you're cutting, but it peels off easily when you're done and it does not leave a sticky residue. Just to give you an idea what kind of volume we're looking at here, remember I'm making five of these because I'm doing them for business, for a store and for online. This stack over to the left, these are all cut already. Those are all the three quarter, those are all the three quarter animals and some half inch uh, thick animals. Then this stack over here, these are all half inch and uh, all the holes are drilled for the eyes I just need to cut. Obviously, there's a, there's a few hours worth of cutting there, but that's fine. I love doing it. That's fun for me. I've got a number seven Pegasus modified geometry blade in the machine since I'm cutting buku animals from half inch thick material. There's nothing more fun for me than cutting out the animals. Projects like this are a great way to use up some of the cutoffs you couldn't bear to throw away. As I just showed you, I use a glue stick to attach patterns to really small pieces. When I start running out of those, I cut and prep larger pieces and fill doors. I like to use a variety of wood species for these animals to keep the set more visually appealing. After I finish cutting, the arc and ramp will receive a polyurethane finish and the animals an oil finish. As I mentioned, I usually use an oil finish on the animals. It crushes on and dries quickly, and it's child safe when dry. I do the edges in one side, then set the pieces down on a piece of wax paper to dry. I can then come back a little later to brush the finish on the second side. I purchase the oil and quart bottles from Cherry Tree Toys, which is also my source for wheels, axle pegs, and other wooden parts for some of the toys I make. For the arc and stand, I'm using a brush on polyurethane. For projects with lots of interior cuts, it makes sense to use a spray poly, but these are simple shapes where it can access every area with a brush. This is a fast drying polyurethane from Minwax, no stain, just a warm tone. I'll finish the edges in one side, set it aside to dry, then come back and do the second side later. So there you have the completed arc and animals. As I mentioned at the beginning, the plans are available as a PDF download from toymakingplans.com. I'll leave a link in the description. I used Pegasus Modified Geometry Blades for all the cuts, and I'll leave a link to my source for the blades, Bearwood Supply. Just so you know, this is an affiliate link, and I receive a commission on any orders placed using that link. This is a project that a beginner with some patience can make. Let me know in the comments if you plan on giving this a try. The Arkan animal should make some child happy and keep them occupied for hours of imaginative playtime. As always, I appreciate and respond to any comments. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.